This is the most expensive granite in the galaxy. It runs 300 to 400 a square foot. It's called Van Gogh granite. I'm gonna try to make it for under 10 bucks a square foot, and I'm gonna teach you how to fix up your home without breaking the bank. Stay tuned and enjoy the video. What's up folks, I'm Mitch with Stone Coat Epoxy and here on this channel we teach everything epoxy from floors, tabletops, showers, countertops and more. And today you're in for a special treat. I'm gonna mimic mother nature and create Van Gogh granite. Like the artist, it's named after the one and only Vincent Van Gogh. It is a blue exotic flowing stone. And from being in the granite industry for over a decade, I know Granite is insanely expensive as soon as you add a little bit of blue. So today we're gonna make it for thousands less and you're gonna go spend at the slab yard using a little bit of stone coat epoxy and a handful of our blue additives. Step one, I'm gonna mix up some stone coat epoxy at a one to one ratio for about two minutes with a paddle mixer and a drill. As soon as we're mixed up, I'll divide the colors into separate mixing cups. I'm properly prepared and I have all my cups laid out. I marked what colors going in there. As soon as we mix, we're on the clock. We designed Stone Coat to be DIY friendly, meaning tons of open working time. You don't have to be in insane rush. You don't need a respirator, all this personal protective equipment. You could use this inside your home. We formulated Stone Coat to go over brand new wood, or in this case, this is a laminate coffee table. So when I'm done creating this project, I'll be able to slap on some legs and use this as a functional piece of art. And here's another pro tip. I'm gonna start off on this small project. I have a customer wanting Van Gogh granite, and before I go and mix this up and slap it all over their entire kitchen, I wanna know what I'm getting myself into. So start with a small project. I picked this table up for 20 bucks at Walmart. It comes with legs, a couple steps to prep it, and here I am, I'm ready to pour epoxy. Today's epoxy countertop technique will be an exotic pour using two separate buckets. I'm gonna make a blue bucket using nothing but blues, a little bit of white, and I'm gonna make nothing but a white bucket. Cause in the Van Gogh granite, there's big sections of contrasting color, like a big chunk of white with a little bit of bronze and like some speckle. So I'm gonna mimic that by first, pouring out all my blues and then coming back with white sections. Then I'm gonna mist on a little bit of my bronze mixed into that alcohol and let this project sit. I put my tape dam on. Why did I use a tape dam? That's because I'm doing the exotic pour technique. I'm mixing up about five ounces per square foot. I'll tint all my colors, pour them back into the bucket, pour that out, let it sit on my countertop for about two to three hours here in Oregon. All right, we're gonna take our mixed epoxy and divide it up amongst our cups. That's what we're gonna grab our mica powders and dyes and then color the epoxy Mix it thoroughly, pour it back on the bucket, and then instant countertops. Picking a granite slab can be one of the most difficult parts of the entire remodeling process. I've seen many, many a husband and wife um, mm, have some pretty uh, intense conversations in front of me while I'm templating. So it's a difficult process for a lot of people, especially when uh, one of the one of the one of the spouses wants exotic beautiful stuff and their mind and their heart is set on that. And then they get the price tag when they sit down with the salesman who then has to convince them to dig into their children's college fund to buy this. So that's the cool thing about our epoxy. You don't have to sacrifice unique style for price, guys. You can, you know, no matter what style of countertop you're making, it's gonna cost you the same amount of money. It's just a buying the products and additives. You know, this one, the Van Gogh granite, I am mixing up an excessive amount of blues. So it's gonna cost you a little bit more buying those additives, but it's nowhere near the $150 per square foot for that slab before you even take that to a fabricator. So, uh, but the base epoxy is the same price no matter what you're making. From the picture that the editor is gonna show you right now of Van Gogh granite, that one's really, really blue. So I might have added too much of the pearls and blues in here. I mean, um, whites. I'm gonna kinda come in and add a little bit more. And now I'm gonna pour this base out. I'll mix up that white exotic pour, get us some white contrasting, and then I'll bring in that speckled from the bronze. I'm, I saved some bronze as well. 
to possibly use as a stick. I'll bring in a stick, uh, like I'm bringing some bronze veins inside the exotic board. But first things first, I'm starting off with a beautiful base. That's also why I have my tape dam here. If you have any spills, oh, that being said, let's do a little wash coat for them. Well, I got all this extra epoxy anyways, right? So I'm gonna use this excess epoxy and create a wash coat. And it's okay, it doesn't have to look pretty. This is just lubricating the board. It's gonna make those colors really move and meld easily. And you do not need a lot of material. You're just wetting down the board with excess epoxy. And you could usually get enough out of your buckets that are left there after you pour. So just kind of rub that out. Okay. Wash coat or grease coat is complete. We're using a bunch of opaque colors so you don't even see this on below. This just helps move the colors I'm about to pour out. And the Van Gogh granite was kind of stacked. So I'm just gonna get a flow and I'm gonna pour this whole bucket out back and forth. Let's see how it looks. Look at that before I pour though. That looks pretty cool. Here we go. Okay, let's build up my white one now. Just building a quick dirty pour with these whites. Perfect. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna have to time this really good. I'm gonna bring in some of this bronze now using the paint stick. Just gonna dip it in, bring in some bronze accents. I think I'm gonna emit the blue dye out of the next one. I really don't like what this is doing here. That is not how that granite looks. You do see these bronze fractures in there. I'm loving a lot what's going on, but that blue dye kind of adds this green to it. I'm not, and the blue pearl also adds the purple. So I think I'm gonna omit those two colors. But what I do is I'd show this to my customer and see what their opinion is of it. So now they also liked that bronze speckling that went on. I don't know if this is gonna work, but I have some bronze mica in 91% isopropyl alcohol. And I did an entire bag of our powder, 15 grams for 16 ounces of alcohol. So if you're gonna do half a bag, just do eight ounces of alcohol. Um, put your lid on nice and tight. I like these Zep sprayers. You can pick them up at the hardware store. Even Wally World has these bad boys. But give them a good shake every time before you spray because the powder will settle out of the alcohol. It'll be clear alcohol and nothing but powder. Uh, it'll actually be dry at the bottom. So don't pump up dry powders. It can make that nozzle get plugged up. I'm nervous about this part, Chris. Ooh, that's a good spray. So you always wanna test your spray out off your project. And let's see if this mix, uh, mimics it, folks. I'm gonna mist a little of this, kind of focusing on this white at first, really. Let's see what it looks like down there. Ooh, I don't know, bro. Yeah, see, it kind of dissipates too much. I don't know if it's gonna look good. Let's go, we're full sending. So I got my nozzle, I adjusted that. I'm testing my spray. I like the different size drops. Now we're just gonna hit this on the piece. The alcohol opens up those micas, adds a natural effect, but adds a little bit of color to the water. Oh, 
Oh my God. Actually, whoa, but look at this. It's pulling the blue out from underneath that. We took a hard detour from Van Gogh Granite, but I think old Vincent would be kind of proud of me because this looks quite epic. And I actually saw Starry Night in person with my good friend and cameraman, Chris Guerra. That was pretty epic, right? Yes, yes. Totally. I, I never thought I'd actually see it. No, neither did I. Man, dude, that looks epic. Look at this, it is like boiling in there. I hope this stays. I was gonna try to avoid that look. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to bring that bronze into the white better. But my customer may be in love with this as much as I am, my goodness gracious. There's a lot going on here. I love how much depth is in some of these lacing and selling. I love the little bits of bronze that got added to my white. It completely moved and made my vein go wild, but in a cool way, I li like this one a lot more. So folks, I'm not gonna touch this another bit whatsoever. I'm on the clock now. I mixed about 25 minutes ago. I'm gonna be back in about two hours. I'm gonna give it a two and a half hour cure, and then I'm gonna test to see how thick my resin is. I have a lot of material on here adding that extra white. To test to see how cured your epoxy is, here's a good pro tip. I'll push my tape dam against the resin, and I could see how quick it moves. It moves right back. It's really fresh. I'll also come over here to my drips. I mean, excuse me, to my puddle I spilled. And I'll feel that. I mean, it just, it's in, its liquefied still. It hasn't cured whatsoever. Tons of time to work with this still. I'm gonna walk away, I'll let this cure. I'll be back to peel this tape dam and see how this bad boy ends up laying out. I'll see you guys in a couple hours. All right, guys, we're back. It's two and a half hours later. <laughs> guys, I'm back. It's been well over two hours, almost two and a half. I'm pushing the limits here. We went to lunch, lunch ran long. Here we are, it's time to pull the tape. The last job I did, I pulled the tape too early. Now I'm pushing the limits. We're gonna pull it a little bit late, but don't fret, we're still fluid. It's still gonna flow. And if it is too late, I'm gonna show you a couple pro tips on how to get yourself out of a bind. But to peel the tape, I like to start at the top and I'll pull it down all the way off the edge. And then I'm gonna use that tape and kind of encourage that epoxy to start flowing over my edge by pulling down and away from that top of that countertop. And then I'm gonna take my glove fingers and start to encourage that epoxy to flow uniformly over that edge. So I kind of come in and just rip that tape at first. I'm gonna walk it all the way down to take off. So this is quite late in the process, but as, as you can see, I'm pulling down. I'm gonna save this tape in case I have to apply any of this resin to, to the edges. No leaks though. I pushed the limits, guys. It almost might be a little too late. I one time was supposed to peel tape from one of Mike's jobs, because I'm only about five minutes from my, uh, the shop here, where, my, where I live. Mike was probably a half hour from the shop, so he was like, hey bro, come on back, peel the tape. Well, I went home, started playing with my kids, da da da. I spaced it, I came back, I was way more set up than this, where I learned in a uh, panic mode that warming up, you know, about this much of the epoxy with a torch kind of high up, you're gonna, I'm gonna have the heat up up, up here because you don't want to scorch it at this stage. It warmed up the resin, which got it to flow again. I don't know if we're at that stage. We might still be flowing enough. Ooh, yeah, look at the back. I don't think I have to do anything. I timed this perfectly. That's how you get high definition edges. That whole thing's just gonna flow nice and slow right on down. And it's gonna, this table is gonna look like it was cut out of a giant slab of granite. I am excited like a kid at Christmas time right now. Golly, that looks good. Now that my epoxy's flowing, I wanna break up any surface tension. I'm not gonna come rub this side to side because my pattern's flowing over. But what I can do is I can rub epoxy on the dry parts of my project aiming down. So I just kinda help this flow by making it wet below. Epoxy likes to flow where epoxy's been. 
So just make it wet below that and that's going to help that epoxy flow nice and uniform and you won't have any dry areas on your edges. See like this spot right here, that's a, a, a problem area. That's going to want to stay dry. So I'll come get my finger on my tape with excess thick epoxy. Kind of paint that on there. And the epoxy is still fluid enough. It's going to flow. Oh my goodness, is this going to be pretty? This is perfect. I couldn't have waited probably another 10 minutes, guys. I'm, I'm almost pushing it a little late. But when you push the limits, you can get some really, really pretty edges. Oh my gosh. And all our pretty techniques are going to stay nice and tight because the epoxy is thickened way up. It is really thick, quite gelled up. It's not going to stretch. This is exactly why we do the tape dams. And this is why you need the excess material. This is why you need the five ounces. Because if I only had three ounces, if I mixed up a clear coat amount of epoxy, three ounces per square foot, and I taped it, and then I peeled the edges, you don't have this mass to push over and coat your edges. People go, I didn't have enough epoxy. Well, why do my edges look like this? I taped them, everything looked good. Bang! That's the that's the problem. You do not tape edges on, on a clear coat. When you're using three ounces per square foot, do not tape edges. Where the confusion comes from is there's products out there that people use two to one fluorine epoxy as a countertop. It is very, very fluid. You need to tape every coating because it runs right the heck off your board. So uh, other brands, other people on YouTube teach you to tape every, every edge. We do not need to tape a clear coat. I'm pumped. This looks very pretty. I'm gonna throw away my tape. I'm gonna walk away. I'm gonna kill my lights. Turning off the lights in the AC gives you the cleanest finish overall. The bugs are gonna to come to the reflection and the AC spits lint out. I'll be back tomorrow to do a clear coat so I'm not that worried about lint or bugs. I'll be able to sand those out, apply my clear coat, let that dry, apply the top coat. That is our three part epoxy countertop system. You got your color coat, you got your clear coat, then the ultimate top coat gets you maximum durability, brings the sheen level down to a more natural look. That gives you the longest lasting, most beautiful countertop that replicates mother nature and granite. This is some Van Gogh granite if I've ever seen it guys. And it cost me only to make this piece well, a little bit over 50 bucks. And now I have a cool little coffee table. My customer's gonna go check Give me this again. Now I know what color scheme I'm gonna go do in their kitchen. Guys, I hope you learned a little bit of tips and tricks that gives you some confidence to try this over your existing or building new countertops. From all of us here at Stone Coat, we hope you enjoyed the video. And until next time, don't forget you got this and we'll see you on the next video. Let me know in the comments below what colors you wanna see. Let's do like Van Gogh Granite 2.0. I don't know, I gotta go. Adios.